Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy here. I'm a self-taught software developer. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about what type of software developer you should think about becoming as you start off in your journey to become a software developer. Maybe this video will help if you are just in the beginning of your software development career. Maybe you just got your job and you're wondering like, what, what should you aim at? What should be the end goal? What are the things that I'm aiming at? And some of the developers who I've seen have a successful and long and lucrative career. Like what are, what type of developers are they? So let's just dive right into it. <laughs> All right. So first and foremost, I highly recommend becoming a developer who is comfortable with testing. The reason I say this is because I was lucky enough to be exposed to testing when I got my first job. The, 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 the organization, organization that I work for, the development team there was big on, on testing. And when I say testing, some people will say they use the word unit testing, but I actually just say automated testing to encompass all of the different aspects of testing from acceptance, acceptance testing, integration testing, and then what I would call unit testing, um, which would technically be what I would refer to as in-memory testing. But unit testing and really test-driven development, the style of coding where you first write a failing test and then you write some code to get that test to succeed and just wash, rinse, repeat. That's a really good paradigm to start out with early on in your career. You don't have to be a strictly test-driven development developer. You don't have to strictly use that life, cy uh, life cycle of development, but the more that you can get close to that sort of style, the better. Now, why is this so important early on? Because I've seen people who, or I've known of people who didn't learn testing until later on in their career, and they were very resistant to it because uh, if you're a web developer, a lot of web developers, the way they test is they write some code and then they go to the UI to see if it worked, right? And that's not, it's not foolproof. As many people have found, there's bugs slip through all the time that way. But when you actually go through the process of writing acceptance, integration, and unit tests in an application, you help make that code so reliable because you've not only tested to make sure that it works from inside out, from end to end, which is what an acceptance test is, you've tested the uh, integration test. So you've made sure that it works well with other applications or it connects well to any other um, APIs or, or um, other, other anything outside of the uh, application process and make sure it works really nice uh, or it's working well. And then unit test is really the fine grain logic, making sure that if you have a calculator function that when you add one and one, that two is the outcome. Now, unit test doesn't prevent everything bad from happening, but it, it really increases the reliability of your code and lowers the bug rate. So learning it early on will help you get comfortable with it. You won't if you learn it in the beginning, you won't feel like you're slowing down later on when you have to learn it and you now are learning this, this new thing where you have to like write tests before you actually write the code. It's, it's, it's really key, it's, it's an awesome thing to learn. It helps you actually write better code because the intent of your code will be more obvious by the way you write tests. So that's a, that's a really great one. Getting comfortable with the command line and Linux is another aspect of, of development that you should definitely shoot for. Now, some of you guys out there who are becoming software developers, you're probably better than I am at Linux. But when I first started, I was pretty strictly a Windows developer and I, I had used Mac before, but I wasn't, even then I didn't really know Linux very well, right? Like I had no real experience in Linux and I couldn't really do too much in terms of just manipulating the file system, et cetera, et cetera. So as I gained more and more experience, that was something that you had to do. You had to be comfortable with moving directories, creating files, um, even doing things like filtering and finding files in the command line through, through, through Unix or Linux commands. And it's so important to know the basics of it. You don't have to become very well versed. Like, please believe me, you don't have to come well versed. You don't have to be a, a Linux kernel developer, right? Like, no, absolutely not. You just need to have a, a pretty decent command of the basics. Navigating directory is huge, right? Like, do you know CD? Do you know LS? Do you know uh, RM? Do you know uh, touch? Point is, you will become more comfortable over, the t over time as you uh, interact with it. But um, you know, the more you can do early on, if you can find some tutorials, just get the basics under you, get comfortable with it, the better off you'll be. And this actually kind of jumps into my next sort of skill that I think you should cultivate as you, or what, you know, what type of developer should you become? One who is comfortable with version control. Now, I use Git, and I just sort of assume that everyone uses Git, but that's not always the case. But let's just assume that you're gonna learn Git, that's gonna be your version control system. 
If it's not, either way, you should learn your version control system very well and you should be very, very comfortable with it. Git in particular can be a little bit intimidating to beginners because, well, for one, uh, you should use the command line. <laughs> a lot of people will use GUIs. They'll use a graphical user interface instead of the command line for Git. And you can definitely do a lot of, a lot of normal stuff with, with the, the graphical user interface that you, that you can push work, you can create work, you can create branches, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll be totally honest with you. I think you should go straight to the command line, skip the graphical user interfaces, learn Git, learn the basics of Git. Um, there's not really a ton of commands that you're ever really going to learn. The most, I think it's probably about 12 or a dozen commands that you need to know to get your basic workflows down in Git. So it's not like it's that complicated, but as you uh, proceed in your career, you're going to, you're obviously going to experience things that are going to increase your skills. Like well, a big one is, is merging and rebasing and, and uh, figuring out what happens when you have merge conflicts. And the faster you can run into those, the better, because you're going to be able to um, handle merge conflicts, conflicts more easily after you've seen a few. So get in there, start le learning version control early on, use the git command line if you're going to use git, and really, really get, like go at it hard, learn as much as you can because that is the way that software developers collaborate together. That's the way they work on code together. So it's one of the, it's one of the most important tools we use. So getting to know it very well will help you um, be more effective in your career. Another huge thing for me uh, that I've seen from other developers that have made them really good at what they do is the ability to write clean code. Now, what the, what the concept of clean code is, is widely, I've heard people refer to it in many different ways, but from what I've seen is somebody who writes clean code essentially writes code with very little noise. They are able to follow the dry principle of not repeating yourself. They follow the principle of doing one thing, like their code usually typically, like they, they modularize their code to the point where the code they're writing, whether it's a class or a function, does one thing, it does it really well, right? It doesn't do eight things and tries to, and the class or the method is a hundred or a thousand lines long. They write their code in a manner that it's easy to find out where things are being done uh, and the naming is consistent and the naming makes sense. And a lot of this is really hard to understand unless you have some experience under your belt to know what bad code looks like. Because like, to be honest with you, I could not have known what clean code was early on unless I had seen so much bad code. And really, I had written so much bad code, right? Like we all at the beginning are gonna write really shitty code and in fact, I, I think that true growth is marked by the fact that every time in your in your career, when you come across your old code, you should always go, oh my God, this is so awful. Like, this is so awful. I'm, I would, you know, like I'm excited to rewrite this because my skills are at a higher level. And that should happen every three to six months. You should be looking at code that you just wrote and knowing exactly how you would change it to, to be more readable, more maintainable, and at, at the end of the day, more clean. So. I'm going to create a future video on clean code because I think clean code is so important and it's changed my, my paradigm of how I code and I, I, lo I love talking about it. So we're going to talk more about that, but that, that's a really important thing to strive for as you progress in your career. So there's a really off the wall quality that I think is actually really important and that many of you guys will probably overlook because you think it's not technical enough and it's not software development to, uh, related, but it's honestly being a positive uh, it's being a positive person who brings good energy and a good vibe to your work environment. Now, look, I know it's such an obvious thing here, but let's, let's take a look at what often happens in the software development field. Many people come in and they, st they start learning and they get to a pretty good level of, of skill and they start to, they start to think that they know everything. And they, especially if you start reading online, there's opinionated people and they'll start teaching you things about why you should do things X way and Y way and how this tool or framework is the best framework out there. And so if you get on a team and you are, it's, first of all, it's good to be opinionated. I think there's nothing wrong with being opinionated, but if you come on and start thinking that your shit don't stink, that you have done all the research, you don't need to listen and that you're just going to get your way, 
it is not going to cut it, honestly. It's just not a good way to collaborate with other people. I don't care what anyone's told you. I don't care what the stereotype is of some really brilliant developer just comes in and goes, this is how we're gonna do things. Like, it doesn't work that way. I've seen, I've literally seen it where people get to this point where they get so close-minded, they think they have no, they know everything. And they can be really skilled developers. But as soon as you get that way, you start to alienate the people around you and you don't become a very good team player. So like you should always be increasing your knowledge and you should always fight for what you think is right. So if you're on a team and you think there is a better way to move forward, you should plead your case and you should plead it vehemently, but you should always be positive. It should never be win-lose, right? Like the more you can make things win-win, the more you can be an asset to your team from a from a positive from a freaking just basic positivity standpoint meaning you can come in you can laugh you can joke even like for me I'm a remote worker and I try to make the work environment fun and 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 make it a place that you know it's like you can come talk to me and we can have conversations I don't ever like the one the one problem is that especially with a lot of you guys who watch my channel I know you're a lot like me you you put your head down and you work 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 and you just like hustle your ass off right like you're gonna work and for a lot of you guys are studying i know you guys have studied like 50 60 hours a week like that's great that's awesome but one of the problems is, is like your face is stuck in a computer for that so many hours like you can get a little too serious and it's really important to like laugh have fun don't take yourself so seriously like enjoy what you're doing because coding is such a fucking privilege like you have no idea how much of a privilege it is to sit and code for eight hours a day and get paid really well for it so if you don't if you're not having fun if you're not being positive like all this is not worth it and you're just gonna become a really old dude or 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 lady who is just sort of just like me because you've been coding all these years taking your shit way too seriously so seriously big big deal like lighten up be a positive uh, uh to be a positive person in your environment and the likelihood that you're going to get a job that you're going to have a career for a very long time like increases so much so really take that to heart so yeah those are my recommendations that's the you know basically <laughs> the type of developer the type of developer skills that you should cultivate as you move on in your journey so i hope you really like them uh, let me know what you think in the comments below uh, other than that please like the video if you enjoyed subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you get any notifications when i put out a new video other than that that's all i really got for today so take care peace out see you guys later